Well, happy Labor Day. So, um, I've been talking about doing screencasts for a while, and uh, I'm finally getting down to it, and uh, this is harder than I anticipated. But, it's okay. So, one of the problems I've had is I can't really show you precisely what I really am doing, but I can talk about what I'm doing because, well, that's not really proprietary to my client, but things like the URLs, usernames, passwords, that might make some people uh, a little bit unhappy with me if I was to put that into a YouTube video, so bear with me. So what I'm doing is I'm, you know, there's a situation where they produce a bunch of files on one server that have to be downloaded onto another server and processed on that other server. Yeah, there's a billion different ways to do it, and this happens to be well, two of the ways. First way that I've been doing, initially they were supposed to have an FTP server, which I could have automated the process already and been done with it. However, that, because of various things that go on, uh, wasn't viable, so um, I've been doing it manually. So, if you consider, like over here, this also considers stuff here. Each one of these be a file, and down in the, the left Hand, bottom left hand corner you see the URL changes uh, depending upon you know which file I'm over we're pretending these are files not images so what I'm what I figured out is hey I can go and download all the files and do everything I need I also have to delete them off the uh, source site so that I can uh, so I don't download them multiple times so here is the what I did it in is PowerShell all of the scripts I've been writing for these guys are in PowerShell. So what we do in this case is we use Invoke Web Request. Um, and the first trick that I had to figure out is how do you log in? So to do that, we you know first we have Invoke Web Request. We pass it the URL. This isn't actually the URL. Um, and we give it this thing, session variable. Now, first thing is PowerShell, all variables start with dollar sign. Here, we do not have a dollar sign. So anyway, uh, invoke web request goes off and invokes web request and gets the results into our dollar sign, our dollar sign R. This contains, you know, it's actually parsed. It's actually an instance of Internet Explorer or something behind the scenes. It's the .NET uh, web request object. Um, so we go into the thing and I put in my username and password and no this is not actually the username and password to access the site whose URL is not in the script anymore. At least not the version of the script I'm showing you. So after we do that we invoke web request to the exact same URL but now we use web session and we give it dollar sign foo. This foo and this foo are the same foo. Two foo. We pass it dollar sign $R as the body and we tell it it's a post. Pretty much acts like you filled in two text boxes and hit the login button. Um, this goes on. We check the status code when it comes back and make sure that it's equal to, if it's not equal to 200, meaning success, we just say fail to log in and we bail out of the script. We're done. So now we have our next step, which is we have to step down a level to a folder that contains the files they're sending to me, which I cleverly called to me. Um, this dollar sign T, I don't know what the meaning of it is. I'll just, I have no idea. All I know is that when I'm actually doing it, I always see the dollar sign T, uh, so I'm including it in case there's some significance to it. Again, we pass in dollar sign foo because it has the cookies and everything else that this thing needs in order to keep working. Again, we check to make sure that the results coming back succeeded. Next, in the HTML, so file list actually contains the HTML contents of that web page that I just requested. So what I use is this regex to go find a list of XLSX files that are in there. Now, unfortunately, this gives me back the entire line. It's just like running grep. So it's going to give me the entire line that contains uh, whatever matched my regular expression. 
So I go in, I get it, and that goes into results. Yes, I'm a bad programmer, I reused results. Oh my god. So, um, I go ahead and write to the screen how many results there are, and then we loop through the results. First thing is, I strip out and get just the um, timestamp out of the file name. Each file is, um, you know, you have this stuff here that I just strip out to get it down. So the file name looks like this. Um, okay, fine. It's going to look something like this. Uh, VEX dot uh, year, month, day, uh, hour, minute, second, second dot xlsx. So all I want is this part because all of the files have the exact same pattern, it's just they change the prefix and the suffix. So we go through, once I have the timestamp, I can generate for each of these, and there's a question mark B, which I'm assuming that means like binary mode or something like that, because being that I'm talking to an FTP server behind the scenes, I'm just guessing that's, a dollar, that's what dollar sign B means. So we put together this URL to get all the files. We also have another one with this, dot, with this question mark D. This, if I actually execute it, will delete the file that it refers to. I then also make a local file name. And with all of that stuff in hand, we go through and we invoke the web requests. You notice dollar sign foo is still here. And what's really cool here is I like it. This is, I think it's cool. I give it the URL. I also would say out file, and I give it where I want the stuff to be put. So I can just go to a web page and dump the contents. The last step is you have to unblock the file. I just, reading through somebody else's blog, I really should give them credit, but unfortunately I closed the uh, browser already. But they just said you have to do that, otherwise uh, it leaves it uh, blocked. Uh, so you can't actually access it. So that unblocks it so everybody can get to it. Uh, and then the last step would be, which I've commented out, which a little hash at the beginning means, uh, you know, comment. Uh, we go ahead and we execute those deletes. So we'd actually take all of the files off of the website. And so we loop through Every, plot, every match that we have in the results. And this will get all the files. Now, once, when I actually install this up on my client server, um, there'll be another step after this, which will actually go through and process all of the files that I output. So we can see, let me do, okay, good. Um, the font's kind of small. Let me up that a little bit. Uh, da, 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 properties, font 20. How's that? Unable to what? Oh, okay, I don't care. So hopefully you can see this. If you can't, well, suck it. So we go to scrape page and it flickers and you see this stuff. I'm not sure how to turn that off yet. I don't know if it even matters. But you can see it's sitting there grabbing all of my files for me. And then, voila, everything's downloaded and ready to go. Which beats the hell out of clicking on each one of those hyperlinks in any web browser. So then I'm going to delete all these because I don't need them on my local system. So anyway, what can you do with this guy? I've got about a minute left before I'm going to kill this. So basically anything you want. I mean, you can go in, you could write a script to sit down and download all the cat pictures you wanted. Uh, you could, I don't even, you know, you could have it, you could crawl Tumblr because you can also, inside, the, not that guy, this guy, inside this, the, you know, we actually have the object with the results of that web page parsed out. So you could go through and you could find all the hyperlinks 
So you could write a web crawler that sits there, you know, hitting any website you want, finds all the hyperlinks and chases those hyperlinks and requests those and downloads and whatever you want. It's up to you, but this is the technique to do it. So anyway, um, hopefully you like this. If you do, you know, uh, comment, tell me what you'd like to see next time and I'll show you uh, as long as, you know, it doesn't get me into too much trouble with uh, the people who actually uh, pay to wrench around here. So, anyway, happy Labor Day. Hope you enjoyed this.